Welcome back, everyone, to Verizon Game Changers, a day two of Series 2. I'm your host, Elizabeth, joined by Bala and Wyatt. And if you're just joining us, as I always say, you have missed a banger because Passion Project has defeated Solstice 2-0 in the most Passion Project way, which is dominating Fashion Bala. Yeah, uh, and that's definitely a big step up. Uh, I think definitely there were some early issues for um, for their opponents there, and uh, I think Passion Project in this case, uh, I mean, they're stepping up way more than they did in that first event that they had. That was very good and uh, pretty standard ascent gameplay, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> starting on that attack, getting more than the five rounds, and then going on to the defense and just rolling from there. Um, that's exactly the sort of thing that you kind of expected when you saw that. Uh, first game and um, as well playing on that defense, not getting too much. I mean, we also have to give credit to Solstice because they, with all the sub changes and everything moving around, they still played as well, I think, as we could expect them to. You know, Nora, Scary Shark had some incredible moments, and you know, we saw like that fun, like 100 Thieves esque tower stack on A <laughs> that we were laughing about during the break. One drone, <laughs> during, all it takes. One drone is all it takes to push you up that stack. Um, but still, for uh, again, we have to wear, uh, Wyatt, we're always talking about these like free agent teams, and these were two free agent teams kind of showing everyone that even if this is not their first priority because they might have jobs, they might have school, they might have other commitments, they can still play an excellent game of Valorant. Yeah, for sure. I think we'll see more of the higher quality sources as the tournament goes on, with some of it being out of their hands in this situation, not having their actual roster, having the sub situation for their map pick. And despite being pretty decent on Ascent historically, you are going up against Passion Project on their home map. So listen, I'm, you know, not a total write off for them, but I think they can kind of take it in that fashion. And, and I will to a pretty large extent as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of them back at full strength. But uh, going back to something that Arden was talking about before the match had started with not seeing in stage one, the passion project that we necessarily expected making top four, which obviously is good on paper, but it's not good enough for what we expect from both these players. And right now I think they're on road to exceed that top four. They looked fantastic today. Just I mean, a right. comprehensive right. win. They are <laughs> top three. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Minimum. Oh, those glasses being, oh, making them smarter every day. We'd love to see it. Um, but one of the uh, players that we have to put a spotlight on is Lazy Lion. Now, Wyatt, you mentioned before that you were super impressed by them coming up into the scene, and they just were constantly impressing you and doing super well. And today, give us a load on Wyatt. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, again, just another really solid performance. Lazy Lion has shown since last year that they're able to be a very uh, fantastic supportive player when necessary. I think more than a lot of the other players that I've watched in NAGC, they have a really fantastic understanding of when and where they need to be using their utility and from what uh, positions they need to be in to use that utility and then actually play for themselves. Anchor Sykes get kills and they today were fantastic on both the KJ map one and the Sova map two in regards to team play and the individuality where they shine as well. It was a really standout performance from them today. Yeah, I mean, it's a mirrors. Every time they peek, they're just perfectly, like, oh, perfectly stopping and then having the crosshair positioned. Oh, wow. Every time. Um, <laughs> I mean, comparable to like some of the, the Sarah Frag stuff that you see in so many places and, and other just fantastic players. Um, definitely something to keep your eye out. Yes, and definitely an amazing performance from Lazy Lion. But someone else who had an amazing performance, as I said, already said as well, is Sabui, who I believe is here for the Verizon post-match interview. I'm very excited to speak to. Hello, Sabui. Hello. Congratulations today. Amazing performance. Thank well you, thank done. Thank you. Uh, we were talking on the desk a lot about just kind of the passion project that has grown during into stage two, or series two rather. You know, series one didn't quite go the direction that I think you and a lot of the audience thought it might go. But now you guys are a force to be reckoned with. Just truly, not, I don't want to say running it down because that's not the right word, but you are just so scary in the server, Sabui. So Thank you. you. Think, we appreciate it. <laughs> do you in do you, what do you think is the biggest uh, change from series one to series two? Uh, I think that loss like early on, you know, us placing top four was like really 
a big hitter for us. Um, obviously, it was really disappointing, but it kind of showed that um, we had a lot of things to fix. So obviously, going forward, we um, did our best to iron out everything. We had some like one roster change, and like from then on, um, we kind of just pushed forward, just keeping like the momentum and like figuring it, like you know giving constructive criticism towards each other and just making sure that we're all on the same page. And I felt like that helped a lot with um, this current event. Can you talk a little bit more in detail about the things you guys talked about needing to fix? Like those, were they more micro or were they more macro things? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, sometimes it'd be like one half of the team would be on one page and the other wouldn't. And then sometimes we'd be kind of hesitant to be making plays and such like that. So I feel like there's like a little bit of, um, the team was divided a little bit there, but um, our team was like able to talk to each other really well and like you know come to like an agreement and most of the time. So I think that's like what makes us stand out a lot more for majority teams. Yeah, and something that we were also talking about on the desk is just the you know there's six out of eight teams uh, in this series too are free agent teams. Passion Patrick being one of them, and uh, Slandy was talking about yesterday. You everyone who is competing, you they're not paid to play, so they have jobs, they have class, they have all these other commitments. What is it like being a free agent team? I obviously I don't know what your commitments are and you don't have to share, but mm -hmm. where this isn't your main focus, but you're still absolutely one of the best teams we have in the series. Um, so for majority of us, like obviously we just, you know, as passion project means like we're passionate about the game. So we kind of like spending a lot of, of our time playing the game and screaming, but um, I guess it is difficult because there's only like two signed teams in this scene and like obviously this is the first time in a long time where there's a like you know there's more free agent teams than pro teams in um main event so i think it's just like a motivation kind of thing um i know majority of my team wants to like get signed and like go forward but it's been like pretty rough so you know we're kind of just floating around and seeing what like comes around but some of us are already looking into collegiate so maybe that's like a different route we might decide to take sooner or later what is the path forward for Passion Project? Do you expect a, you know, first place finish, get all those circuit points? Because Passion Project, in order to qualify for the GCC, the, ch the big championship, because there is an OCQ, has to grab those points now, considering mm -hmm. your performance in Series 1. Do you expect to make it there, or do you kind of expect to go to, like, a top three, top two sort of situation? Um, I think right now how we're feeling, um, today was a slow start from us, but I do believe that we can get first seed, or if not, just, like, you know, contest SR for that spot, and grab those points but um I think I'll think it'll be like a good game and we'll you know pick pick up the slack a little bit more um closer to the end of this event so to be clear when you say you uh uh you know com uh, compete for SR spot like for paraphrasing you do you believe you're like in, in kind of like the second best team in the uh yeah in the yeah I, I I would say we are I think we can like you know play well and we can contest them for sure give them a run for their money I know you can play well, Sabuwe. <laughs> I think everyone knows you can play well. Y'all are absolutely fantastic team, and you all will either be facing SR or Reforms coming out, depending on the uh -huh. uh, results of the next match. Uh, do you have any predictions? Do you have anything you would like to say to your possible opponents? Mm, not, not really. We're just here. We're just passionate. We just want to play. Just passionate. Just want to play. Almost like it's a project. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Sabuwe. Congratulations again. Thank you so much. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much. Great thing. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank Always you so awesome much. to talk to the players in the game. Always great to talk to them to get their kind of inside story and to hear where exactly they think they are in the kind of zeitgeist and rankings of the uh, series itself. So, but we're going to take a little bit of a break. So get some water, get some snack, go to the bathroom, do your thing, and I'll see you later. Every time I needed a new phone, I had to switch carriers. I told him. At Verizon, everyone can get the best deals. Like that iPhone 15 on them. Switching all the time, it wasn't easy. 35. You're gonna be here forever. And here's your wireless contract. Do I need a lawyer for this? Those were hard days. Representative switch. Now that I got a huge storage and battery upgrade, I'm officially done switching. New and existing customers get iPhone 15 on us when they trade in any iPhone, any condition, guaranteed. I really wish you told me sooner. I did. <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings.
Uh, I'm so sorry about that. Hello. Hi, chat. Apologies about that. <laughs> I could hear um, you. I you, know you, that you I could voice, hear you. you voice but I was like, me. you know, it was, was, it was very on. nice. You, you, were, you had the inside <laughs> scoop. You knew. Uh, but just for the audience, repeat that. I apologize for that. We are back. If you were just joining us, Passion Project defeated Solstice in a very, very clean and convincing 2-0. They will continue their journey in the upper bracket while Solstice will continue their journey through the lower bracket in a do or die fashion. Now, moving forward, we are going to watch Sh Shopify Rebellion versus uh, Reformed Game Changer. Now, I we I think this is one we've all been waiting for. Obviously, Shopify Rebellion, kind of the epitome of game changers, but Reformed really impressed us yesterday with some amazing Valorant that we, we kind of thought would be back and forth. But Reformed just really ball, just kind of took it and ran with it yesterday. Oh, absolutely, they they looked fantastic in that game uh, opening game against uh, Mesa's Millionaire. So yeah, this is going to be really exciting. Uh, Shopify to me, this is the first time we're going to get watch watch them on the main broadcast or the. You know the entire kitten caboodle and um kitten always caboodle? always very fun to watch especially early on when they are frying and let's see if reform can actually uh, you know make it so that they don't fry but uh typically this one is just fun good old valorant stompage and i kind of expect it to be that way yes and obviously shop for rebellion uh, have been i think you counted they've had a good like a, what's the number ball about the, their number of first place wins thus far uh, in a row? I, 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 i'm not counting anymore because it's ridiculous but it's they, <laughs> yeah I, I was counting the series and they've won 20 series in a row including game changers international last year um yes. in game changers obviously yes and they are the reigning world champion of game, champions excuse me of game changers mel won it while playing in isolation having COVID leading her team but why uh shopify rebellion is really awesome because when you look at the team as individual players, Wyatt, everyone is just truly, oh, look at these new headshots, we love it, um, are just, oh, they're menaces, assassins in the server, Wyatt. Yep, and I feel like every <laughs> single GC, we just, you're just saying the same points about this team every single time, and it's because they, they <laughs> keep being really good. 
all the time. There's never a, ooh, are they gonna bounce back? There's never a, mmm, look at, like, there's just no, there's no variance. They're just really good every time. So no, we just have the same narratives every single GC series because they're just always the number one team. They're always the team to beat. And it's always for the same reasons. It's because of Floor being clearly the best duelist in the scene. It's because of Mel being the experienced IGL. Alexis, the experienced support player that puts Floor in those positions to win. I think the firepower that Noya and Sarah bring to round out the team. It's just the same thing every single time, <laughs> and they keep winning because of it. There's nothing new to say. It's, but I would, I did speak to Mel before this event, and she told me that, you know, the parody of the scene is the best that it's ever been. She was one that said, you know, don't sleep on these free agent teams. And as we can tell, these free agent teams are packing a punch. Some of Mel's forward teammates, like Jazzykins, are on those teams. But speaking of impact players, Sarah has a little bit of a video for us to watch. So Sarah's going to frag out, and we're going to play that video. Hi, I'm Sarah. I play Initiator slash Flex for Shopify Rebellion. I think one thing about my playstyle in game that I appreciate is that I don't really bait. Like, I'm generally one of the people running it down and dying. And that's, like, probably also the same thing that annoys me. Like, sometimes I am just dead for no reason. Um, so Noya plays Senti for us. Sometimes her comms can be a little bit interesting because English is not her first language. But I also love that about her because she is just so funny sometimes. So I guess it goes both ways. So Lexi plays flashes slash flex for us. One thing that I love about her is that her util is almost always perfect. She is perfect and I love her. So Mel plays smokes and she also IGLs. One thing that I really appreciate about her is that she always brings the same energy to proc. Like she's really, really consistent and really dedicated. Um, like you'll never see her slacking on a day, but at the same time, she kind of dem demands that from everyone else. So uh, sometimes if you're having a rough day, it can be a lot but I also appreciate that. So Fluorescent plays Duelist for us. Um, she is just so unbelievably talented. Like, that's definitely something I love about her. Like, she is just going to kill everyone. Main reason you should give her our team is that, I mean, apart from the fact that we're just the best in GC right now, by far, is like really our personalities, surprisingly. I, everyone on my team is so funny and so unique. And I think we have some really interesting dynamics. I wish I could share like some of the things that happen in scrims because everyone on this team is just so hilarious and they deserve the world. If I'm completely honest, when I first started competing, most of the motivation for me was money. Like I just really didn't want to work a real job. So I got into GC pretty early on. But as time has gone on, I've started to realize that I actually do have a lot of passion for competing. At first, out of necessity, and then down the line, I started to realize I actually do enjoy it a lot. I probably won't be satisfied in esports until I've like played at a higher level. Like tier one is the dream, honestly. I'd like to have a decent run, like maybe qualify for like an international or something at the highest level. Like it's a bit ambitious, but. Maybe one day. I think if you enjoy competition, like you just want to play at the highest level. Like that's just how it'd be. And I just enjoy competing. I think we all kind of have the same drive. Um, so we definitely motivate each other a lot, yeah. I have a kind of aura. I think it's very different from the kind of aura that people generally refer to when they talk about sports aura. I don't think I can use the word that came to mind. Mental illness, maybe? Let's go with mental illness. Like when I was first starting to compete in this game, and even recently, like, Confidence is probably one of the hardest things to have consistently in this game. But like, the more you realize that sometimes unlucky stuff is just gonna happen, like that's just the nature of the game. I think the easier it is to bounce back from like whiffing a few shots or like having an unfortunate opportunity. And then on top of that, just like teammates building me up, friends building me up. I think another thing this team does a really good job of is just holding each other accountable and like making sure we know when something is actually our fault or when something is like more random or, you know what I mean? I love pineapple on pizza, it's so good. Like, it's just so good. I, I don't know. Try it and give it like a, like a real try and like try to let go of your preconceptions because it's good. I'm just, I'm, it's good, I'm sorry. I honestly, I like anime. The problem is I'm like so ADHD that it's hard for me to read subtitles and like pay attention to a show without going on my phone. You know what I mean? Like I probably could read manga, honestly. I've never really given it a go, but I would probably enjoy it. I think that Valorant does not leave too much time for having a life, but I try, sometimes I try. 
I guess I like art. Like, I just like all different kinds of art. I like movies and music and books. I like going to shows. I like seeing bands a lot. I like seeing movies. I just like art, I guess. All I got for you guys is go love everyone. That's it. I loved almost everything about that video, but as your resident Italian, I do have to tell you that pineapple on pizza is unacceptable. Why do you why do you care so much? <laughs> why do why also, have you bad take, but that's fine. Are you kidding me? <laughs> bad, bad take? take? Do you know what my last name is? That whole, it ends in a vowel. That whole video was good it, but... take after good take after good take. He, first <laughs> no, of all, every single take was good. First of all, the, the, the here for the money, love that. Love that. <laughs> so I was sitting there like, damn. But that, there was character development Just there. like Why? me, there for was... real. No, I, mean, was... no, I don't care no, about the character good. development. <laughs> <laughs> here for the money, love that. The aura was mental illness, love that. Just uh, there's a lot to love. The pineapple on pizza, also a pretty good take. It's it's nice to have variants. It's nice to have it sometimes. Look at Liz trying to act too good for it. It's crazy. Not too good. I have a very mm. Italian father who would disown me if I ate pineapple on pizza, let alone like it. That's right. true. That's true. Tell, Why him, you that, at me? Hmm. tell him to get some good tastes. Let him know. <laughs> let him know that I told him that. Did you just say about my father? <laughs> Yeah, come Anyways, on, Elizabeth on. Maraschino. Let's come on. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to the reformed roster, <laughs> we have Kazler, Merely Slandy, Riv, and Misu pulling off a stellar performance. Um, Slandy, obviously, we talked to yesterday, having in, d d uh, during the post-match interview, and you know she kind of echoed a lot of what we're talking about today about like the work of free agent teams and what they have to do. Uh, Riv, we highlighted a lot. Uh, she was a part that red pre-package video that we learned um but all these players bala just truly kind of running away with it yesterday yeah uh, absolutely um for me stand out was kasler uh to to close out that icebox series when mesos was still trying to hang in there in that second map um so many plays being made down there and a lot of these uh, girls as well there's so much stuff that they were doing. I mean, there was the deadlock on Bayern. There was Millie going crazy on the duelist role. Um, and then Misu with the experience, Slandy with the experience. You heard the interview type of stuff as well. So much going for Reformed, and I, I think they're mo more motivated than ever. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned the interview, Bala, because Slandy said something very, very interesting at the end. I would love for if we could just hear it one more time to jog our memories. Um, <laughs> one last question before I let you go. Enjoy your birthday. What can you give us like a birthday wish we can all hope for? for you oh gosh a birthday wish um yeah hmm you know i think i will give my birthday wish to shopify tomorrow because they're probably gonna need it so they can have it <laughs> i just love your face every time some crazy good i mean stuff. that was the coldest <laughs> line Less she could have said reaction <laughs> <laughs> it's just <laughs> I wasn't expecting, I was expecting like, oh, like maybe like a trip, you know, maybe she wants to go see a show. No, shop for bell and you're gonna need the help. <laughs> like that is a crazy thing to say. It's incredible. I love the confidence. I love the charitable donation of giving her birthday wish away. And Slandy, if you're watching this, I'm sure you're not, but once you see this, I hope you had an amazing birthday from on behalf of all of us. Um, we, I love a good birthday. Woo -woo. Um, but uh, Bala, you were talking about Kazler was your standout performer in mm -hmm. uh, out of Reform GC. Yeah, out of the, the basic three standout performers that there was for me, <laughs> I, I definitely think Kazler was super impressive when it came to Icebox. I mean, look at the stats, but also look at the clips, look at the clutches, look at the tape itself. It was so good. The amount of actually basically shut down the, uh, the attempt at a comeback from performed in so many of these moments playing the gecko um and yeah and just always being up front on site taking down the fast retakes as well closing out the 1v1s yeah very 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 impressive uh from castler in the performance yesterday on the gecko specifically pretty crazy in the past 60 days so all of this gc tournaments before Kazler is putting up a 0. 0.92 kills per round on that's, Gecko. Yeah. That's cr <laughs> that's crazy. That's like extremely good duelist stats. Yo, why? Say the stat again. That Say is... the stat again. Say the stat again. Oh, I got a dramatic. The... Oh, uh, Kazler's putting up 0. 0.92 kills per round on Gecko. 
that this guy is just soy jacking out of control. <laughs> <laughs> He's going crazy. Are you done? I'm sorry. Thank you. You were saying <laughs> Oh, no, that's it. I, that's oh, all that's I, it? It's just cool. It's just cool. Um, it's, oh, it's funny. It's, it's silly. Yeah, um, but you're, while you're doing it wrong, it's a this, and then it's that head up, head I'm, down. I, yeah, okay? I, yeah, sorry. So I'm if you're going to... Yeah, not sure. You know, it's okay. You can work on it. You can practice it, because you'll right. never be me. Moving on. Um, we have Reform GC versus Shopify Rebellion, and we have the maps here. We have Bind, Sunset, and Lotus. We have not seen a Bind today. We did not get to see a Sunset yet, because we did not go to map three in the last series, uh, but we did get to see a Lotus. Uh, Wyatt, I'm going to throw to you anything that immediately stands out to you about these map picks and bands. Yeah, immediately we have Bind, and that's where Reformed, they get silly. They have the deadlock. Riv played deadlock. <laughs> And a lot of the deadlock gameplay from Riv previously, it was shooting people a lot and putting up some crazy <laughs> numbers. It was it was one of those kind of deadlock games. But listen, anytime I get to see a team playing deadlock, I'm down to see more of it. So they're gonna take us to bind where they play it and I'm all for it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, but, but I do think against a team like Shopify Rebellion, it's not one of those things where it's going to get immense value other than the fact that maybe if Shopify is playing up tempo, which you can see sometimes, it could slow them down enough. Um, that is potential. But other than that, it's not really moving the needle. But I also don't think that it's like a worse sentinel than than like a cipher on this map or, or anything like that. Yes, honestly, it's one of those things where, you know, Riv played the Dodlick last time. You might not, I'm not going to even say what I was going to say next. Never mind. We're good. But we do see Mel on the harbor that we've seen her play before. I think also in Haven, she's played it before. We've seen Mel play that harbor. But it's also that double smokes comp, Wyatt. We see that Sarah on the gecko, uh, but not Kazler on the gecko, but Kazler on the sky. Uh, so very different comps. Obviously, no Sentinel on Shopify Rebellion, a, dub, a double initiator comp. But anything that really stands out to you, why about these agent comps? Oh, uh, I mean, aside from the deadlock, it is the harbor is definitely not a super common pick at the moment on buying. Though you know it gets enough use. Typically, you're just going to have the viper in that spot, right? You would expect to see the viper to be able to put those walls down on short and have those lurk timings to go up, that kind of thing. But the harbor util can be really nice for cycling and post plants when you're on attack. Once you have the spike down. It can just be so obnoxious to have to try and re-push through smokes when you're getting cascaded. Um, it becomes really tough. So I'm yeah. just interested to see how they're going to use it to substitute for the Viper in some of those mid-round situations where you normally have a lurk wall on attack. Yeah, I, this this is very Paper X to me. Um, <laughs> and it's um, kind of the first time I'm really seeing Shopify take a big risk meta-wise in terms of like how they're cooking. Because, yeah, I think this is spurred on by the viper changes uh, wholeheartedly and uh, you also see though noya was the one playing viper in the past so they're swapping over towards that more traditional controller in the brim and mel's coming in the harbor because that's kind of her deal she's the harbor specialist or has been in the past whenever they do need to insert it but yeah this is this is super interesting this is creative i like this from shopify well, let's not wait any longer. Can Shopify Rebellion get creative and take it or reformed, stun the world and take it away from Shopify Rebellion? I have some two goats who might even re reference Seinfeld here again. It is Athena and Shift. We do, at least I do, love to reference a good Seinfeld. Uh, and maybe we can start it off early because Harbor is like the equivalent of like the bubble boy. He's got Cove. You can just hide <laughs> inside of it. Maybe it works. Maybe it's a stretch. But it does feel like this Harbor pick maybe used as a chance to kind of be more unpredictable, more mobile than what a Viper can provide in terms of attacking sites i don't know i'm just trying to think what they're cooking up here athena i mean i feel like it's definitely going to be some sort of explosive turn on how shopify plays we know them as such a consistent well disciplined team and i feel like they're going to add a lot more things to that mix mm. the new meta i love that from them i like seeing new things especially just after watching the vct that just happened yeah, absolutely the case. And I think it is something to be said about, you know, you still have the same zone of control that you get out of a Viper, but maybe again, maybe it just sits in the fact that it's not as predictable, where you don't have this wall that starts you off. It kind of keeps reform, maybe guessing a little bit in terms of where the executes actually will be. I don't know. Hard to say, but it'll be interesting to see what they try to decide what to do with this harbor as the deadlock utility is all set up over towards B. Early high tide is called. That's just used to separate out some space here at Hookah. This harbor wall being perfect for getting a lot of that map control. I mean, Hookah and Long, 
Then you have all the information towards long for reformed, but hookah, it's completely open, but now just slow walking, contacting around, trying to put a little bit more pressure with maybe some more harbor util, which is exactly what we were talking about. But it's looking like Shopify is gonna have this hit towards short aid. Yeah, there is a little bit of pressure being established by Mel, but like you mentioned, everything leaning towards an A hit where really it's just down to what Misu could see from the backside over towards Halls. And here comes the burst on for Shopify. Smokes will give them a little bit of separation between the defenders, which means that, of course, the big man could get to work on the plant. Defense rotating over, but it's, I'll be honest, it's a little slow here, Athena. Fluorescent able to come through to at least, you know, get a little bit of intel, but the lurk from Mel keeps some of the defense at bay, and we're going to have a little bit of a 4v3 over the top of the A site. Yep, Sarah still stuck on site in that pocket position. Not that much util to work with. And now Reformed are going to try to take this shower, try to take some sort of natural pull. But Noya is ready for that Ooh. foot drop to Millie. Sloppy opening shots over towards the backside. So now it's just down to how does this post plant deal with a limited amount of time. Rip trying to hop on. Misu good for the first. Alexis popping off. Ooh. And Alexis will take down three. All of it pretty much right in front of her. But still impressive shot tracking for Shopify to get the pistol. What a beautiful clutch. I was just about to say that the lurk from Mel not being too too good because of that timing. Just a little bit slow, not able to help that much. And that's the problem with Harbor. But as I say that, Alexis is just coming up with a perfect clutch. I will say, though, it felt a little bit sloppy. You know, I didn't know exactly what the plan was for Shopify to take that sort of back sight. You know, you had the player fluorescent in that U-Haul just kind of holding. But... I mean, with pistol, util is always limited. It's hard to kind of fight really deep. Look, this fight towards long. B is insane. Yeah, just spamming through the sky smoke, and it leads to three very early eliminations for Shopify. And you would assume that from here on out, <laughs> this round's going to feel pretty darn casual for Shopify. Yep, not much. Just a solid reset, holding, getting info, using that sky dog to get all this information. They're not going to know that both players are already set up here. But it doesn't matter because Orb farmed on Mel and a full execute coming in. Yeah, Cascade, Paint Cell, again, just allowing this extra bit of speed moving forward. Mel for three in the round. He's through the corner. Does well to take down two. That's not insignificant. A couple of kills will force some rebuys going into this bonus, but three Bulldogs still part of the picture here for Ready. Shopify in round three. This gun round is going to be so important for Reformed because they still are up against rifles, all rifles from Shopify. Yes, it's three Bulldogs, but it still works. But then, on the other hand, we also have Mel with a Harbor ult ready. This means yeah. you can probably take sight pretty easily, especially if you have Fluorescent kind of double satching in with that Judge. I got baited by the rifle, by the way, <laughs> but with that Judge, dude, why does this keep happening to us? <laughs> Happened with the operator yesterday. <laughs> it's one of those <laughs> things just keeps on providing. A little mosh line up here for Sarah. Looks like it's going to be a quick hit here for Shopify. Paint shells and, of course, the wall for Mel being placed. And Fluorescent using the cove just to get up on top of Riv. Well read. Holds her ground very nicely. Fluorescent will at least control over towards U-Haul. Alexis also reading the teleport over towards Shower side. Gets one of the two, leaving Fluorescent to a weapon upgrade and 1v3. Kind of a wild, fast hit from SR, but it just didn't work out. And the only reason why is Riv just walking through U-Haul and taking their ones. But now, this 1v3, not looking too hot, but we do have a Roomba left in the pockets of Fluorescent and two of these players' backside. May isolate this 1v2, depending if Fluorescent can predict it on the corner. Yeah, a little bit of a wider swing there by Misu, and of course the double stack just too hard to deal with. So really well done, really from the honest point of view of the players sitting just in the front of the site, because Shopify went quickly, they used a lot, but still, three opening kills come through for Reformed, and a lot of it coming out of Riv. Yeah, it really makes you think, you know, the reason why Viper Battle is so good for this A take as well is that you can put that orb towards that U-Haul and kind of mm. deny anyone to peek through it. And Riv just noticed that right away and was not scared to take those peeks. So maybe using more util, maybe just being more aware of that U-Haul for SR, but they're still holding on to this harbor for this gun round. This could be the round that they use it with four of these players toward Long B. Could be an opportunity as well to grab an orb and get Seekers on board here for Alexis. They're not going to opt to try to do that over towards U-Haul side, though. Pings are down over towards B-Long, early Trailblazer, and, interestingly enough, the Molly gets spent. So, for the side of Reform, this is all about, hey, don't let them take any early extensions towards either Showers or over here towards B-Long. Yep, their early round definitely slowed down a lot. They still have all their util to kind of take as much space. 
a lot of sky pressure towards this hookah just to kind of like put that pressure and we see that harbor wall again this is going to be the wall that we're going to see from sr in order to take both that b space but you know, not much you can do when you have just a brim in the sky. They're going to have to re-clear for reformed, and they're choosing to do it towards that Huqa side. But does SR know that they're running into yeah. this deadlock with three players set up on site? Yeah, the sensors are just part of the problem. There goes the brim smoke down immediately. Snakebite gets placed, just trying to slow this down, and that would be pretty successful. Cascade will be thrown on top of this high tie just to try to get, again, more separation on top of the site. Sensor, Sensor drone for... is finding some good value here, though, for the deadlock. It's connecting a couple of different times. Spike gets toggled for the plant, but not committed. And the longer this takes, the more that Reformed is on the pinch, but it's a quick retake back over to the teleporter. Reckoning gets called, and that's going to be a free plant here for Shopify on B. Yeah, that B split execution with the Harbor ult. Usually you don't want to go back into Hookah if you don't have any of that space. Yes. But it really didn't matter because they had the ult in order to help clear. And these clean uh, clean kills from SR, I mean, they didn't even have a chance to respond on Reform. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that for Reformed, it looked like they were about a second or two from being able to catch Shopify stuck over to the front side of U-Haul. But the teleporter comes out and Shopify do their diligence to make sure that no one's hitting from the flank. And from the front, there's just really no chance. Even with Riv having an Annihilation, just not going to have a go at trying to make a play further forward. So it's about saving the rifle. And it'll be three rounds for Shopify, only needing to repurchase for one player. This is a great start for Shopify's eco. For sure, looking really solid. And I love how they're just keeping it simple. You know, on their bonus round, they used a really fast hit. But other than that, their early round is really slow. They're taking a lot of this pressure, using that Harbor so Util sorry, to people. extensive kind yeah. of map control that they need. And it's really hard for Reform to get that much uh, information back because they do have the double control in the Senti. The only thing they can do is Sky kind of using their util to re-clear, get some information, yeah, yeah. or using their bodies. And I feel like that's going to be a little bit of an edge that SR does have util-wise. But of course, we're going to see the same default. Three players going towards right that long B. Not that much hookah worry, but Deadlock does have a setup in there too. Yeah, and I think that's kind of part of the thing for Reformed is let's make sure that it's never both sides of the zone being hit at the same time. Whether that's talking about A, trying to control showers, or at least put some sort of a threat detection there, or the same mm -hmm. situation over towards B. Let's just make sure that, again, because of the clearance that Harbor can get, let's make sure that one side of the wall is at least challenged. And that has been good, at least for now, for Reformed. It just comes down to dealing with the actual threat, which has been mostly flooded from the other direction for sure and this deadlock wall is being put down so early that they need to know how to kind of hold beyond breaking it and the time that it takes to break it they usually have this response and sky just used their flash towards short a for reform to get that information but sr is playing so far back still defaulting and just baiting trying to get some information on what their setup looks yeah, like. yeah i mean you've got seekers you've got thrash so there are some tools available for sr to try to use as a uh, kind of method to the madness in terms of breaking down what looks to be a B hit with only 40 seconds on the clock. Nice little push up here from Slandy. They're gonna see that there's really no one over towards A and that may lead to Kaz rotating over pretty quickly. There's the Seekers there, the Thrash used both hand in hand. Snakebite is down, Cove will be used to get through it. Plus of course, Fluorescent also bursting into sight, but Millie in the corner gets the first opening. Double Misu following up with two of her own. And that may be just about it for Reform. Slandy coming from behind, deals with the final. That is a perfect hold for Reform. Yeah, Reform just one step ahead in that round. I mean, they re-cleared short twice. They used the Sky Flash earlier when SR was playing really, really far back. But then afterwards, they used that dog. Kazler actually using the dog left. down short, allowing Cyan to be pushed in that pushed up position. So they were fully ready for this behold. They knew exactly what was going on. The Gecko Flash getting two, but it did not matter because positioning wise, Reformed was so ready. They had so much delay. They had the deadlock. They had the snake bite and they had the needs really well around yeah. by reform really really well done cascade gonna be used over towards b long initially but the big issue here for the side of shopify will be dealing with the pit Ooh. or not at all um okay you said it was a big deal <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> i mean just make me eat my words that's not the usual way we see that happen and so now a little bit of extra weight on the shoulders of kaz who's committed into cubby and may try to extend a little bit further. Oh, Weapon no. shown. Noya will get the second. And now Shopify have all intentions, I'm sure, of just bursting on day. 
Got the spike. I love how they're not speeding up way too much. They're still taking their time. They know they have numbers and just using all their retail to full execute to contribute to that round win. They don't want to do anything way too hasty. And now they're just going to take that side. A lot of util as well to play this post hunt. They still, as soon as I said that, they don't have Molly anymore, but they do have the nades. They still have the cove. They have a lot of stuff oh, to yeah. be able to play this post hunt. And the retake for reformed. Do you want to commit the showstopper? Do you wait to maybe find a pick first and then maybe use it to gain extra ground? Yeah, I feel like you wait for a pick first. You got to see if you can yeah. kind of make it, but it's going to be a little bit hard. No one on SR is giving any of these peaks. Well, Noya does show a shoulder. Defensive smoke goes down. Sierra really close on the double stack box. Double stack just to make sure no one's on. And hold on a second. Here's a couple eliminations. 2v3 situation. Orbital strike. And you've got the showstopper. But both players who reformed are already committed to staying on site. No chance to pull either ultimate out. And Shopify will hold the post plant. Really, really good start from Shopify. Feels like they have the solid understanding now of when they're playing the stacked sites. And I say that Noya just got that crazy kill, the crazy spam through that pit. That's not the best thing, but they're still recognizing that the way that the deadlock is played, you mentioned this earlier, the way the deadlock is played, you still need some sort of support. And they're recognizing that they cannot leave their Sentinel alone. So whenever they do find that Sentinel util, they're not afraid to oh, kind yeah. of fade yeah. it out and go the other way. And I think that that's a really, really strong start. But they actually started with a different default, still having a lot of players towards that B. But instead of that long B and hookah wall that we've seen Mal do, they've placed it towards u-haul and it's going to put just a little bit extra pressure towards that a site and the interesting thing kind of just going back to your talking point about just kind of sidestepping the sentinel utility that's been kind of the key that we've seen across every level of Valorant right now when it comes to deadlock mm -hmm. as much as you want to say like it forces you into choke points honestly speaking we're not really seeing the same kind of value that you would expect based on the kid on paper as we've got the orbital strike plus the show stop from open up defense trying to respond with one of their own but Unfortunately, not really going to trade everything fully back on the site. So now the defense has to rotate in for me. 3v3. This retake is definitely winnable. We still have the showstopper ready for Millie, but Fluorescent holding this aggressive angle towards spawn, making sure no one can come out. The Prowler being used to clear that information. Out goes the showstopper. Oh, but it's just a little bit too late. Floor's able to get out of there. And now from the top of the container, a little bit of a crossfire setup, and Noya doesn't need the help. Two for them, three in total on the round. Landy, last one alive. Nice Ooh. opening shot. Woo! Gave oh us something God. to get excited about, but Alexis <laughs> on the double peak will confirm the kill plus the round 5 2 Shopify. What a flick. That was nasty, dude. But yeah, now we're going to have this eco round, this thrifty coming in from Reform. This looks crazy. This is one of those rounds that you show to players that don't play Valorant, and you're like, can you explain what's happening here? <laughs> because so many ults were expended. So many trades were happening. Everything happened so quick with just a flash. But SR, obviously, with that post plant, just doing really well and being really patient. Yeah. It does get a little messy, but that's my tech FPS right there in a nutshell. <laughs> Opening, try to flash a dash for Kaz. Just looking for something off of the old guiding light. Not going to be allowed to get anything, though. So we'll stay 5v5. No opening trap. But the interesting thing here for Reformed is they've got a full commitment off of just the Sheriffs and the Stinger just gambling on an A hit here. Yeah, they put a lot of pressure towards Hookah with the peak, but it doesn't look like SR is going to fall for it at all all i feel like against these ecos playing slow is always the best bet just kind of staying together as a group and it's probably gonna pay off i mean there's not much reformed can do here other than just hope to gamble but with this retake they do have a little bit of util that they could use going on to be it's just a matter of how sr set up themselves and how much space they take on this map and the interesting thing about it is not only are they taking space they're doing it without spending a ton of utility just the trailblazer are being spent just to confirm no one else is still left over towards Zuka. molly to block any potential defenders from rotating in and the wingman will get to work on the plant so 5v5 post plant weapon advantage to shopify even the thrash to clear out backside elbow. I mean, there's just no ground, no weapons, really no nothing for Reform to use here in this retake. And they may just sacrifice their lives in the spike here. Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about. Shopify understood that even if there's no one on the site, they still probably could get way more mouth control. And they are. And Mel just kidding? getting the free spams through the smoke. Two kills are ready to go down. And the gecko up going again. I mean, that's... That's unreal. <laughs> I mean... 
every bit of centering from Mel was perfectly on someone's head <laughs> through smoke. So, our form not able to do too much in terms of damaging the eco, which is getting out of hand now for Shopify. But a couple extra ultimate orbs will be earned off of the death to the spike. 6-2 the count. Shopify looking very comfortable, which is dangerous news considering that this is Reform's map pick. Yep, the rounds that Reformed have won, though, are the rounds where they are a little bit more proactive. Using that Sky Util to get a lot of their information pushed up, they know that Shopify likes to play back a lot of the time and not really go for anything speedy. And so going into this, I feel like they need to be a little bit patient at the start and then use their Util more for the mid round for that information. They need to put a wrench into their defaults and need to be able to capitalize on any information that they can get. Because generally, I feel like they get a good sense of information when they do push, when they do get that util. And they use their rotations really, really well. But right now, I think the name of the game is just being able to get that info at a certain time. Yeah. Well, once again, High Tide will go out. Reform are going to step a little bit deeper into Hookah this time just to challenge it. Again, they've done this pretty regularly, whether it's trying to stay forward at B long or keep control of Hookah. It just depends on how much fluorescent can deal with, and she deals with both. Of course, why not? So, Boomba will be thrown just to make sure nothing else is there. Reckoning is out, and that's going to be Shopify strolling into B for a plan. The full commit execute with the Harbor Alt. The second time in this map already that we've had the Harbor Alt go down. Crazy, crazy fast regen, but three players on Reformed here probably looking to save. They have these three guns. They don't have that much util to retake with. I mean, you don't have the sky flash. You don't really have yeah. the wall. You do have smokes, but it's just definitely a little bit harder. That that was just fluorescent, doing fluorescent things. But I think Reformed had a better understanding. They knew they had to play a little bit more forward, a little bit more aggressive to get some sort of map control and stop Shopify from putting that much pressure on their default. Okay, so let's have the conversation here because we've got two comps that, you know, we've seen more deadlock recently but mm -hmm. not common by any stretch of the imagination. You also got the Harbor, which is a first pick, first time pick rather for Shopify. Just give me your, your, your pro player thoughts on how both comps are being executed on right now. I feel like for SR using the Harbor mainly for the default is really, really smart because a lot of time when you have a Viper instead of that, you can only put pressure kind of as a lurk role. Sure, and I sure. feel like with Harbor, you have the ability to do both. And I feel like SR is doing that really well. They're putting pressure on B and they put pressure on A. They know how to utilize for both. Whereas for the deadlock, I mean, I've seen it played in multiple different ways. And I feel like the best chance of playing deadlock is very reactive gameplay as a sentinel. Ah. Not necessarily being left alone, but you know, when you know that a team is about to execute, being able to throw down your wall and prevent a choke from being entered instead of just oh, using all your util early because it, it's just kind of rough. But, yeah, I mean, SR with another default going into this. Not much. If it's not broke, don't fix it. You know <laughs> exactly. And it is interesting because, to your point, talking about the deadlock gameplay, the barrier match was being used early and often in the first handful of rounds of this first half. We haven't really seen that come out initially since really, like, round seven or so. And now you're getting it with a minute left, so that makes sense to kind of choke off the backside of A may lead to the defense being able to rotate over a bit quicker if they so choose to. Just depends on what Kaz can see at B long. They're stepping up. The Boombot gets placed, but SR are right there to meet it. Dizzy just to make sure no one else can challenge. And once again, Shopify Rebellion getting away with clean entries toward the B site. Reform, they had the right idea just a few That's seconds too late. Me. They could have put a wrench into whatever it was SR was trying to do. They tried to re-clear and tried to do it together with that util. We saw the sky heading forward into it. But it just was a little bit too late. And now Riv left alone in this 1v5 floor. Two off that showstopper. Yeah. I feel like SR is just really starting to run away with it right now. Yeah, it definitely feels like kind of, again, using the spark notes on what we were kind of, you were kind of mentioning this is the proactivity from shopify is getting away with all the benefit and advantages compared to the retro and kind of reactive ability that we're starting mm -hmm. to see out of the comp from reformed and that's the other part about deadlock is you really don't have an opportunity to get much further forward than where you're playing already because you know the kit kind of forced you to play around choke points so 
there hasn't been any extra steps for reform to try to take more ground away than mm -hmm. what they're kind of deciding is the line in the sand. We can only go up to this point. Otherwise, Riv's kid is just completely useless. So it does feel like they're a little bit limited to try to deal with all of this aggression and, again, unpredictable utility coming out of Mel at the moment, who's 10 and 5, by the way, very casually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the good things that deadlock could potentially do that i feel like would work against a team that's working as slow as sr is being able to take space and put mm. your deadlock util a lot deeper on the map like for example if you take showers and you put your deadlock util towards the end of showers where the other team has to retake you get a better understanding of which site that the other team is coming to and i feel like reform just have kept to deadlock just staying on site and not being as reactive sure, so i feel like sure. it, it definitely ties into the proactivity of reformed where they need to be able to push in order to set up like a like equivalent of putting a deep alarm bot as kj in a smoke it's the same thing for deadlock but just using your sound sensor instead got you okay definitely things to keep in mind especially when we eventually swap over to the offensive side because that utility could obviously make the post plant a little bit more mm -hmm. locked down and secure but for the moment Reform just on Sheriffs with a Stinger, a Judge, and a Guardian. So not the greatest advice, to put it plainly. Barrier Mesh over towards B-Long just gets deleted with still a minute 15 on the clock. So Shopify Rebellion can just kind of kill noise here, create a little bit more doubt, and see what Reform is going to bite onto. The four players stacked towards B. Reformed is just gambling at this point. They're thinking, you know, there's a lot of pressure there. We didn't hear anything towards A. I think it's a safe gamble. And, you know... With these uh, weapons, it's a pretty good call too. I mean, you have the judge ready in U-Haul, one and done sort of situation, and Riv with the late util. Ah. Interesting, yeah. but it's not gonna push SR away. They're still committed to this map. Trying for the barrier mesh, paint shells combination, doesn't really fully hit. And now shot fire belly on 35 seconds left to go. Yeah, Mel actually just kind of thought the corner was cleared. Not the case. Kaz gets one million, another. Maybe a chance left. here for Reform to steal away a thrifty rib up pop from behind. That will work. Plus the body shot. Leaves Alexis by herself. And that is exactly what you want to see for Reform. Not technically a thrifty, but an eco round win essentially is helpful towards trying to get this half back to more manageable terms. That was a perfect gamble. I feel like Reform now, they're going to understand the, the full potential that they have with this comp is understanding when the other team is going to be coming in. I feel like SR have given a lot, but it's it's to the point where their executes haven't been broken. The only time that they have lost a couple of these rounds are when they chose to fast execute when they don't have the best guns or just losing out on their post time. So I feel like SR is just doing what they do best, which is just so default. And RF have finally set up for that. They have two, two players towards the song. I thought they were going to set up for some sort of TP play. Sure. But Showers has completely been annihilated by SR. A new approach to their default this round. Speaking of annihilated, Riv has been holding on to the annihilation for <laughs> seven rounds, I think. I'm curious to see if that's going to be used at any point. To be fair, though, again, like kind of we talked about this for a brief moment is, you know, Riv's setup, once you see it, you just don't go that direction. So, mm -hmm. you know, Riv really hasn't been in a spot to kind of stall out these hits, really, all things told. Trail Blizzard for the offense for Shopify clears out the rest of showers. Mel did see an elbow of Slandy. So the operator will be trained in on mid, but as soon as the Toxic goes up, it'll be Shopify rotating back over towards B with 45 seconds of the clock. And another gamble coming in from RF as well. As we see Misu kind of head over towards that A site. Four players here, but Riv is alone with all their util. Is this going to be the hold that we need? But peeking just a little bit. Noya does catch with, and your ult is coming out. Well, Annihilation doesn't connect, and Showstopper will. Riv at least gets one before dropping. That's not bad to go one for one. Clock is also an issue here. Just 18 seconds on the clock. Fluorescent, no more utility, trying to hold close, but you got to commit for the plan. And with Sarah down, it's going to be Brimstone doing it the old-fashioned way. Mel, on the cross, over through Sands. Here's the Here teleporter, and just making sure that Slady doesn't rotate in. Patience, though, not fully executed as there will be connection. And now it's just down to reform from elbow. Three-man hit. Here comes the flash plus the peak. No one involved yet. Now the crossfire. Alexis working it out for the double. And Misu is stuck backside elbow. Really no chance at this one. And Alexis will get all three for a 9-3 half for Shopify. 
Yeah, that was a kind of a wild ride. It felt like there wasn't much reform could do. Just a little bit slow on understanding and fully adapting what SR was doing. But Rip, I mean, able to get one just was not enough. And that was one of the issues that we felt like with having a deadlock is not being able to be left alone on that site. Their, their information is just not enough with that util. And I feel like Riv just tried. But RF, I mean, they tried to gamble, but we'll see how they end up doing on this attack half because with deadlock, again, it could be a lot more aggressive yeah. of util in these post plants, uh, denying people from U-Haul peeking into the rest of their team. It's actually really, really worked, but it just depends how they play it. Well, the stats would favor that their offensive side ends up being stronger. Nearly 70% win rate since, you know, the Coles qualifiers had started in April on this map compared to their 46% win rate on defense. So this should be their stronger side. Opening shots from Shopify's defense, though, tagging a lot. And Mel is just getting to work in the shooting range, but only comes away with one. And the trades are good here for reform. Not just that. They've got plenty of tools to try to set up this post plant, including the barrier mesh. Yep, these two players trying to hold some sort of crossfire on site, but it did not work out for Shopify because RF was just holding together as a team. And now they're going to walk contact into U-Haul. And for this post plant, they're setting up a lot of this map control. They do have a snake bite as well for that post plant, as well oh. as a molly and a perfect stop for Noya. Well, here we go. It'll be down to timing. Good proactive snake bite gets placed. That'll stop any early intentions towards trying to get the spike defused. Who's going to commit for it? Can't. Molly's down again. And with Noya falling, now it's just down to fluorescent. Not enough time. And this is what we should come to expect. In certain regards, again, it's early, but reform. Quick to get onto site. And more importantly, you got good utility to make that post plant so darn difficult to break down. For sure, they played that perfectly. The second they had numbers advantage and all their util, they played it really well. And that's the thing about this comp too. When you have a harbor, you don't get to play post plants as often, which doesn't really matter for Shopify because they were planning to play a little bit forward. But when you have that Viper for RF, they fully understand their protocols of playing post plant. Granted, it is just a pistol round, but they've already shown a deep understanding of how they're planning on playing this meta. And now for this round, we have three players from Shopify towards this long B looking to play some sort of trap, maybe even choosing to TP towards shower if they need to. Well, see how things go. Boombot out and dealt with early. Is he being held on to? Could be seeing some sort of a double flash peak here from the side of Shopify. But for reform, they've already backed off saying, hmm, don't love the idea of it. Let's go feel a lot other parts of the map before we commit. Slowing it down, kind of playing with that oh, Viper off. wall, fully up in U-Haul, <laughs> a lot of map control here. This is going to be communicated by Misu to the rest of the team, but showers, they just need to be a little bit careful of the solo Noya sitting in showers. But SR, looking like they might have that trap play set up, but RF Reddit shift, they're just going to yep, walk yep. towards short. And Misu playing so darn deep, the rate connector. I mean, there's really not going to be much of a hope here for Shopify to stop this from happening or even denying the post plant. You have a push through teleporter, sure, but there's a barrier mesh in your way at showers. You've got a good forward presence or back presence, I should say, for Slandy, just kind of making sure nothing hits through backside mid. And with a post plant setup that has every base covered, this is going to be really noisy and really messy for Shopify. Snake fight down. And honestly, that may be enough for Shopify to already say, we can't do anything. We just have to stay here. Yeah, that wall is exactly what we're talking about, about denying the choke points. Because on this post line, you see how many shots it took to break any part of that wall. And the nade, uh, uh, unfortunately, going on to Noya. But it's okay. I mean, coming out, trying to get any of these picks, yeah. just being super unfortunate for SR, but extremely well played by RF. They've not taken any chances by going into showers, unknown, unknown territory. And it was a really good shot because they may have gotten crunched by SR, but they took that site, they took the map control, they used the deadlock wall in order to block that choke point from showers. Perfectly well executed post plant. And this is kind of the RF that we were looking to see. Yep in this match and definitely the reason why this is their best map in their arsenal in a lot of ways again their offensive side has been right spectacular compared to the mm -hmm. average so 
See if they can keep stringing it together, especially here on the bonus. Early high tide thrown through the teleporter will give some sans control on top of who control, but reform said we don't really care. We're just going to get ourselves not just on site, but deep in towards it. Millie did get a look at one over towards eight connector, but the one component of this defense that's gone on check is Noya here in the corner. It's all going to be down to what the timing looks like and can Mel find anything from top heaven as soon as the smoke dissipates. Flaw going down towards showers, but they still don't know where Noya is. They have this whole right side of sight on lock for Shopify, but the rest of our are playing that post mount position ready for a flank. Fluorescent gets shut down, and now Sarah left with two players to fight with <laughs> Slandy finishing that off. Yeah, Slandy really well done. Also, just throwing the proactive volley just in case they fall. And, well, no need for it. How about Reform's post plant? Bonus comes through. Thanks for the free weapons. And all of a sudden, Reformed have turned the tables almost completely 180 as they're off to the races here on their attack. It's actually so funny seeing the parallels where on Shopify's bonus, they decided to fast hit A. And on RF's bonus, they also decided to fast hit A. But it only worked out for Reformed. And again, their post match just looking so solid. Shopify are going to have to find some sort of answer to fast flooding or denying Riv from being able to put down that much pressure on denying a choke point. But for this round, they are on this eco sheriffs all around looking to just hold and get their ones towards yeah. the short and just have some sort of reaction from RF. Well, it's going to be a little bit of a snowball through mid trying to step up. Slandy on one corner. A couple of shots come through. Misu thinking about peaking this. Get the opener. Not the follow up. And those are decent trades here for Shopify. Reform trying to come back over towards it. Is he up and out? But does not really affect too much. Mel does get a couple though. So here we go. Alexis versus Riv 1v1. But it is a Sheriff versus a Vandal. The only question will be, what does the timing look like as Alexis at the moment is essentially chasing the shadow of Riv? Both players just walking, not trying to make too much noise, but Alexis, here's the plant, and Riv was just not ready for that, and the thrifty goes the way of Shopify. All they had to do was be a little bit aggressive, and once Mel got a hold of that Vandal, it was kind of over, getting three kills. That was insane. It was originally a really good hold, but the call to come back and fight for Riff for yeah. maybe just wasn't it. They had the spike safe. They had the rest of their players safe, ready to go. I admire coming back and trying to help the rest of their team, but unfortunately it just wasn't it because there was a stack of four players pushing down for Shopify. Well, this resets the eco just a touch and maybe more importantly sets up a bit of a trend and a pattern here that Shopify may need to do more of that. Try to get proactive. Don't allow reform to have these comfortable executes. See if you can test mm -hmm. them before the spike even makes commitment towards one side or the other. Boombot in. Fluorescent will deny it. Follow-up paint shells coming in with the grab net, but it doesn't lock once again. So here come Reform trying to clear out Hookah, but Floor on the corner, spamming it out for a double. Just sees the barrel and predicts the pre-fire perfectly for the opening two. I mean, what better defense than Floor go kill? <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> Floor just taking Hookah, getting a third towards long. This. It, this was just an insane defense where they're just fighting up and being aggressive is something that we talked about because you can't let reform get into those post pawn situations even though they have three of these amazing ults for Justice retake on the down. defense side yeah they still don't want to be left in that retake position well to be fair the showstopper just gets earned <laughs> coming into the round it was largely just the reckoning but yeah, I mean, it, I think that's got to be the motto here for Shopify is, is you cannot allow them to get these very comfortable post plants. There's so many mollies that can be used. Of course, left. Riv's utility speaks for itself. So you have to try to contest in some regard in Shopify. Good on the previous round, which is Sheriffs, and now better with the full arsenal at their disposal. And with only 18 seconds left, Reform may just try to save these couple of the weapons, and it looks like that will be successful. Yeah, Misu has found... Oh, left. you say that, but we have the zoomies towards short for Slimey really? actually looking to get the spike planted here, Shiv. Okay. Bold call. Molly is going to be in, but doesn't quite reach, and so the spike will get planted. And now you've got the orbital strike to try to help out a post plant if you can find the opportunity and space to call it in. Shopify three-man stack. Is he out? Orbital strike calls in. Misu prepared for it, but Sarah gets the lineup. And it was a decent idea, but all in all, it ends up being an expensive cost here. Shopify get to 11. 
I mean, I admire going for that. Low key, I feel like you're good. You can probably still buy a little bit next round for reform. They don't have the best economy, but saving two vandals wasn't gonna be the big difference in the change because they still are able to afford an operator if they wanted to, but cows are just being the only one that's not allowed to buy. Reformed with that timeout, I think it's really well needed because now they're understanding that SR is just starting to play up front. They're starting to just be aggressive. We've seen it the past couple of rounds where SR has just not been afraid. Even though they've gotten pushed off with Util, they still walk back and re-clear that space with bodies, which is so hard for Reform to kind of counter because they use their Sky Dog, they use yep. their Ray's Roomba in order to get that space. So when it's just lost because they've just decided to walk back in, it is just so hard. They need to get themselves set up in a little bit of a faster way so that they can get into that post hunt position. And a little bit of an unfortunate set of circumstances because the boom bot plus you've also had the grav net paint shells combination through hookah mm -hmm. last round. Floresa just gets the barrel information and then gets the perfect pre-fire. I mean, yeah. trying to clear out the one corner you didn't try to combo util ends up being what punishes reformed. And I think in no other way would you normally expect that. I, I think just generally, mm -hmm. but fluorescent could sometimes just have that X factor ability. So important round here for reform after the timeout showstopper at the ready for them but the same could be said for shopify is also still holding on to the reckoning and the thrash and they're also an orb away from seekers so they're almost to the full bag mm -hmm. of tricks that they need to lock in this map and they have four of these players already up towards short looking to be aggressive showstopper will work plus the fall cool. i mean come on <laughs> Thermal vision or what, my friends? That's unreal. Plus the detainment on the thrash. Yeah. The proactive gameplay for Shopify just not being countered on either side of the spike. Again, the defense just being floor go kill is actually crazy. And so smart from SR to absolutely Match change point. the pace coming off of that attack pause because they know that they're going to be planning to counter whatever's been happening the past few rounds. So they've changed it up completely, changed the tempo of the game. And honestly, they're making Reform play to their speed. Now Reform, they're just a little bit unlucky here as well. I mean, Millie really trying to hold on, getting those two kills. But they were holding yep. back. They were somewhat prepared. But what can you do when you have a showstopper and a spam through that Viper wall? Hold back even further? I mean, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Sit where you buy guns? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? Oh, and that's not even a good counter because then you're just giving up the map. And yeah. like you said, it's just it's difficult to reclear space when you're banking on essentially what is this offense relying on post plants. So tall ask here, but the buy is not terrible for reformed facing a map point situation on their first opening pick. Trailblazer is out. Showstopper right behind it. And with that not being seen, Floor is just up top off a little bit of a corner one way. And with that, the Reckoning gets called. Kaz doing well to get one back. Shopify can't fully contest forward, but at the same really moment of saying that, Reformed also have to deny the Reckoning. So they're also pushed right back in towards A main again. Yeah, this 3v4, do or die here for Reformed in order to get this map. But there's just so much delay from SR and that execute just wasn't looking too hot. I mean, no sky flash was used yep. to come out of short and both players just caught out of guard. So I wonder if it was just a miscom or the execute was supposed to be a little bit more delayed, but now left. holding, trying to find any of these players from SR, but they're not giving them anything. Maybe a chance to teleport back and try to burst over towards B, but the problem here is Alexis is still playing over towards garden and if this kind of octagon position goes well, with not being flashed out, she can just wait for the clock. Yep, that's exactly how you win the round. And with that, also the map. No time to plant here. It's a decent idea from Reform, but 13-6 will be the final. Shopify providing not just the opening kind of cooked up comp, but on top of that, just the response after the first three, four rounds of that defense saying, we're not going to let you plant the spike anymore. Figure out a different way to beat us. 
<laughs> yeah, it felt like, you know, they really had a good system going. They had a good answer to Shopify's defense, but then Shopify just adapted so, so, so quick. Unfortunately, on Reform's defense, they were just one step behind, a couple of seconds behind on their reclears, and Shopify just took that and ran. And overall, I feel like both these teams had so much adaptation within their hands. It's just a matter of who executed better. Indeed the case. Well, I'm sure the big brains on the desk are chomping at the bit, trying to break this one down and give you their final thoughts on map number one while also setting up what's going to be Shopify's pick for map number two. Don't go far. More Game Changers right after this.